So I have two motors for this project. I have this 10 horsepower motor, which is going to run the actual blade. And I also have this 1.8 horsepower motor, which I'm going to use for the raise and lower mechanism on the saw. I got both these motors as well as the linear rails from my friend Austin, who was just looking to get rid of them. He had them in his shop, didn't have any plans for them, and wanted to see them put to good use. I'll link to his Instagram profile down below if you want to check that out. Both these motors are three-phase motors, which means I can't just plug this motor into my home power system because I only have single-phase power. Now, there are a lot of different ways to run a three-phase motor on single-phase power. I decided to go with a VFD, mostly due to cost and versatility reasons. The cost on these things isn't super ridiculous and you can also do a lot of things with the controller to make the motors more versatile. That's not going to be so much important on the drive motor, but it will become really important for the up and down raise lower mechanism. So first thing I got to do is see if this big motor is wired correctly for 220 volt power and uh, hook it up and see if it actually runs. So I already got the wiring box open and I'm going to take this thing off and I'm going to see if I can fix it a little bit. It looks like it's been dropped a few times. Uh, it's pretty bent and beat up both on the cover and the, uh, the box itself. So I need to get this thing off of here anyway. So I just pulled that off. Now on the inside of the box is a wiring diagram which tells you um, which voltage this motor is going to be wired for. This thing can run on either 230 volts or 460 volts and According to this diagram right here, this is currently wired for 460 volts. I need to get down to the 230 volts. Um, and that is pretty easy to tell on here. All of the wires coming out of the motor itself, all these kind of tan wires, they're all labeled with numbers. So this is number four. And you can match it up to the diagram on the, uh, the door there, the cover, and uh, do what it says. <laughs> So I can tell this is wired for high voltage based on the diagram here. It's kind of all worn off, but um, on here, there's three pairs that are jumped together. So for instance, four and seven are connected together for high voltage. So if I see number four here, I see that it is tied to number seven. So in high voltage, the line comes into these three connectors here. For low voltage, I want to connect four, five, and six together and then line goes to one and seven together, two and eight together, and three and nine together. So I have my new cable that's gonna go between the motor and the VFD, but I'm gonna take care of the easy one first. I'm going to connect four, five, and six together. Since this is just temporary right now, I'm going to just attach these with some wire nuts. I put these crimp on connectors onto this side since these are going to be a little more permanent. And then I'll just put those under the terminals. This side's a little more temporary. I'm going to put a little pigtail on this side and have it plugged so it can be plugged in and out pretty easily. So for right now, I'm just going to put these directly underneath the terminals. So I'll put this cover back on so I don't kill myself by accident by touching this accidentally. All right, let's go plug it in. Is there an on button? switch on this thing all right so I stopped recording that pretty early on because uh, things just got pretty frustrating so let me kind of walk you through what happened as I tried to get this thing hooked up so first off the troubleshooting information on these things is terrible so there's that <laughs> so I have this other VFD same exact one but when I was buying these VFDs I bought this one by accident at first because I was getting a little click happy on eBay. I bought this one, which is for a higher voltage than the one I needed, which is that one. So that one came, I had it all hooked up and only the power LED on the board itself was lit. The screen didn't come on, 
the power LED on the screen didn't come on at all either. So there was something else wrong with it. So I started taking it apart thinking, well, oh, what do I have to lose? And I found out that this piece in here, whatever this controls, was uh, blown. So luckily for me, the VFD that I had originally bought, that I still had to um, get rid of or sell or whatever, had the exact same board with the exact same component on it, same exact numbers, so I swapped those together and then that solved that problem. Now, however, the power LED came on, but it would just flash and then nothing else happened. And of course, in the instruction manual, it doesn't say what that means anywhere. So after some digging through forms online, I found out that because I am derating this VFD, basically I'm only putting single phase into a three phase input VFD, that I need to jump the extra leg of the input to one of my existing legs to get it to recognize all three legs have input voltage on them. And then at that point, it finally came on. But just because it came on doesn't mean that it actually made the motor go. Uh, the interface on these things, not intuitive at all, at all. <laughs> so I walked through the manual again and I got through everything of all the setup. Actually went, before I did that, I actually went back and reset all the factory defaults. I went back through the whole setup process. I got it all set up and ready to go. But it took me a ridiculously long time to figure out how to actually tell it to change the frequency which makes the motor spin. So in the manual on there, they expect this thing to have a potentiometer on it that you just turn and it makes the frequency change. Well, I wanted to use the buttons on here to change that. And I had to get to a setting on there that you can't normally get to, or I couldn't get to based off of the setup information from the manual. So eventually I got it all figured out and now this thing turns the motor. So now I can move on. <laughs> So I'm using a bucket as kind of a mock-up of the motor so I can kind of figure out where I want to put the motor in this direction and also in this direction. Uh, one of the things here is the motor is uh, about 16 inches long or so. Stay. <laughs> so the motor is about 16 inches long and I need the shaft out on this side. So coming back from this plane here, 16 inches, puts it out here over where the blade's going to be. So if you imagine a blade coming off the top of each wheel and coming across, that blade is going to be eight inches off the beam. So we need to get the motor up at least eight inches above the beam. So I did have this extra piece of beam stock that I was thinking of using to kind of build things up, but I came up with a, a lighter option or a lighter weight option. So I picked up this piece of two by eight tube. And what I'll do with this is cut it in half to about nine inches long. Um, weld those vertically on here, sort of like little legs, and then I'll weld a couple of cross members across the top, some two inch stock, and that'll put the base, or the top of the frame for the base of the motor, the motor mount, <laughs> 10 inches above the beam, which is giving me plenty of clearance above the blade. So I think I'll put it somewhere in this area. That seems like a pretty good spot.
so the other day when I was out here making this mount, I got a little ahead of myself, a little bit carried away, and I added this extra piece of um, angle here to complete the platform. But I don't actually need it. I don't need this much platform extension. And this is actually going to get in the way of the belt. As you can see here, the, actually, the angle here would be in the way of the belt coming down into the pulley over here. So this has to go. Not that big of a deal. I just cut it off with the circular saw. So I had originally planned on having the raised lower mechanism working at this point so that I could lift the saw head up high enough to clear the logs I have uh, blocking the two sides of the mill right now. Well, as you'll see in the upcoming videos, the lift mechanism isn't quite working yet. <laughs> so I have the carriage pulled all the way forward as far as I can, and now I'm going to try and get the motor um, underneath where it needs to be. Now with it up here, I can figure out uh, the front and back position to get the shaft of the motor in line with the shaft of the drive wheel. And it looks like this is going to work out pretty well with it pretty much flush at the front and almost flush at the back. That puts the end of the shaft pretty much in line with the upright so that the pulley and the belt will be able to clear this upright and connect with the drive shaft. And then also just check to make sure the pulleys are roughly aligned just so that the drive pulley isn't twisted compared to the, uh, the motor pulley or vice versa. Now that I have the motor in what I think is the right spot or roughly the right spot, I'll transfer the whole locations and then I'll bolt the motor to this base so I can pick it up and get it out of the way and then drill all the holes. So with the motor in place, now I can measure the distance between the two shafts to get my belt length. So they are about 43 and a half inches apart. So I'll take my diameters of my wheels and calculate the length of the belts that I need. Let's see what this is like to push now. It's not too bad. Not too bad. About forward. It's not too bad either. Cool. All right, so I'll get some belts ordered for this thing. So we're that much closer to seeing something turning, whether it is a blade on here or just the drive wheel spinning. I don't really care. I'm just excited to see something moving <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Next time, we'll take a look at the raise and lower mechanism. I kind of shot these two videos kind of overlapping. Um, but next time I'll have the bit about the raised lower mechanism and then we'll move on from there. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill, 
or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Well, it's getting dark. Time to tuck you back in. Put those tarps back on. <laughs>